well, hello and welcome to the webinar, uh, LIS, LIS Technology or LIS Technology, the new way of ceramic 3D printing. My name is Madeline Pryor and I will, as always, be the moderator today. Uh, I am actually joined today by our distinguished panelists, Dr. Johannes Homer, Dr. Thomas Müller, Dr. Holger Vampers, and actually we will also be joined as well, more for the Q&A session, by Dr. Stefan Walter, um, who is going to help, especially with the more technical questions. Uh, speaking of, please do note that there is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Uh, any questions you have, please do just ask them there. It will mean that it's much more likely that we see them. Um, and if we could just move to the next slide. I will introduce myself and the speakers in a tiny bit, but before we get started, I actually wanted to send you as well a poll. If you would just take a moment, ah, well, I will relaunch the poll. Ah, if you already answered the poll, if you could answer it again, um, it's just been launched uh, one more time. Just please answer the poll and get the answers. Again, if you already answered it, please just do it one more time because it will delete it otherwise. Um, we, well, you see it on your screen. I see you're starting to answer. Um, this is just to get an idea of who you are and what you're aiming to get out of the webinar today so we can better understand what, uh, well, who you are uh, since we cannot see you. Um, I will leave you a few moments just to get that answered. Please do answer it. Um, additionally, just to let you know, we are recording this webinar. It will be available later on YouTube. If you would like to be notified of this, you can subscribe to the 3D Natives YouTube channel. Uh, we have a lot of other interesting 3D Natives content, as well, of course, the webinars, including this one. Uh, that will be in a few days. It will not be immediately afterwards. Um, and while I'm just waiting for people to finish, I'm actually going to introduce uh, the agenda. You can see on this slide that this is the agenda for the next hour or so. Right now we are clearly in the introduction and I will shortly introduce you to the panelists as well. Um, afterwards, we will actually turn into looking at the differences between LCM, which is the classical, well, the classic lithos, te lithos technology for ceramic 3D printing and how it differs from this new technology, LIS, which is very exciting. Um, and after that, you can learn more about the potential of the technology before we turn to some use cases. And of course, the Q&A at the end. Once again, please just a kind reminder to fill in the Q&A at the bottom with any questions you may have. You'll be able to see the questions and also upvote any questions that you would like answered. Um, I think we got the majority there, so I will just end the poll uh, as well, just quickly. Very interesting. Many of you are in the ceramic industry, actually, but you are, but we also have a lot of beginners, so a nice mix. Um, and you're using 3D printing for prototyping, and you are hoping to get a deeper understanding of this. Um, if you actually look, you can just see the answers on your screen right now. Well, you'll certainly get that. And uh, we're excited to bring you with this today. So now to the, uh, the panelists, as I previously stated, my name is Madeline Pryor. I am the English content specialist for 3D Natives, which is the largest online media platform on 3D printing and is available in four languages, English, French, German, and Spanish. Sorry, a fifth language, actually Italian. Uh, I am the moderator of the panel and the Q&A, though I will mostly leave the talking up to these gentlemen here. Uh, actually, let's start with the panelists. First up is Dr. Johannes Homer, who is the CEO of Lithos. He has spent many years of he spent many years of research at Vienna University of Technology, which equipped him with the extensive tech technical knowledge of Azure's manufacturing of high performance ceramics. He holds a PhD in material science and has worked in AM since 2003. In 2011, he co-founded Lithos as a spin-off from TU Vienna. And as an expert in ceramic AM, he has written many publications and is also a co-inventor of numerous patents in the field. We are very excited to have him with us. Next, we have Dr. Thomas Muller, who is the CEO of QEP3D. He has more than 14, uh, he has a lot of experience in the industry because more than 14 years ago, he started with the development and process optimization 
in ceramic 3D printing for water-based slip systems at the TU Klaus Thal. Apology German speakers, I will butcher everything. Dr. Müller is involved in a number of publications and is the co-inventor of several patents in the field of ceramic 3D printing. Next up, Holger, Dr. Holger Wampers is the managing director at Illumina Systems. Um, he completed his doctorate in the field of technical ceramics and has been working for many years in various responsibilities in the field of technical ceramics, including dental ceramics, mechanical engineering, soldering technology, or 3D printing. He has been the managing director of Illumina Systems for 11 years now and has been graded um, and has been very active in the group. And last but not least, our guest who will come mostly at the end of the webinar, Dr. Stefan Walter is the head of product and process development at Illumina Systems. Uh, he obtained his degree in material science from the Friedrich Alexander University in Erlangen. And he spent his postdoc at the University of Trento in Italy, doing research in the field of sole gel derived glass ceramic materials. From 2001, he was working with corporate technology at Siemens in Munich in different topics like high temperature and ultra high temperature materials development, as well as high temperature application of ceramic matrix compo composites. Since, 2000, uh, since 2021, he has been the head of product and process development at Illumina Systems and coordinates the additive manufacturing technologies, DLP, LCM, and LIS. And with that, we will actually now move into the bulk of the webinar. Um, so welcome once again, everyone, and let's get started. I think we're all muted. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, I was unmuted. I was controlling the different things, so sorry for the uh, short problems. So thank you again for, for the introduction. Um, also a very warm welcome from my side. Um, I'm happy to have you here today. We want to introduce you into the LIS or LIS technology, as we can also call it, uh, the new way of, of 3D printing. Before we get starting, please let me um, uh, introduce a little bit to Litos for those people who don't know us yet. Um, so basically we are, I would say, very well known in the field of, of ceramic already uh, because we are um, very clearly the, the market and innovation leader in ceramic 3D printing, especially when it comes to high performance ceramics. We are offering a full solution of printers, materials, software, and also a lot of customized solution. Just to give you um, a number, uh, we are 100, nearly 120 employees at the moment at four locations, two in Austria, one in the United States, and one in China. And we have uh, far more than 100 machines installed worldwide, whereas what I'm actually very proud of to have 25% uh, uh, of our uh, customers have more than uh, one machine, which is actually a um, quite high number. We have been one of the pioneers in the field of, of ceramic additive manufacturing and have really started uh, from scratch uh, more than 11 years ago. And um, just to give you also an idea of the market, I think that was, uh, it's really cool to see that uh, although the ceramic additive manufacturing market is rather young, uh, it's really growing now very, very fast, and we see this as well. So um, this this is something which uh, which we can feel. We have uh, oh in the uh, in the pandemic during the pandemic we had uh, we have fifteen we have uh, employed more than fifty additional people, and um, so we really see this growth already. We have uh, customers who are really using this as a production technology, uh, what we do and what we have seen is that with the technology, which I will just show you in a second, the LCM technology, we are not capable of addressing the, the whole market. And so uh, we decided to also introduce um, the list technology. But uh, first of all, uh, let me come to the, to the LCM technology, uh, which maybe some of you already know. Uh, LCM stands for lithography-based ceramic manufacturing, which means that we're using light as a structuring method. Uh, so very similar to stellar lithography to, to DLP-based technology. And uh, what I dare to say in the meantime, that this is currently uh, our technology is currently the industrial standard for high-performance ceramics. 
and is used uh, worldwide uh, and also used as a production technology. So um, one of our uh, biggest customer will produce 1.5 to 2 million parts um, this year with this kind of technology. I don't want to go into detail how it works. There are a lot of webinars and things where you can watch it and, and um, see, see an explanation for it. But I just to, to introduce you to LCS, I think it's important why we need LCS. Um, therefore, it's in, important to understand why we have LCM. So what we already have here is a very broad portfolio of different uh, materials. Uh, what you see here, I mean, you see some dark materials, but most of the materials are rather uh, are, are um, not dark. They are white or whitish color, and and um, and this is one of the main drawbacks of an of lithography based manufacturing, either DLP or or SDL, uh, SLA, that you cannot use all different uh, types of, um, of ceramics because light absorption is sometimes an issue and you cannot absorb or you cannot penetrate through the material because it absorbs too much light. Um, one other issue where we, where we can use LCM very much is to make very fine and delicate structures. So we can go down to 50 microns in strut thicknesses and as you can see here, I mean, it always looks very big here if it's on the screen, but basically these are very small and tiny parts and thinner than the, than the human hair um, are, are these struts. And um, so this is, I mean, this is the really the one very end uh, and definitely this uh, lithography based uh, technologies, they are more used for smaller parts with thinner wall thicknesses, but there is definitely a limitation in the wall thickness because we are using a photomeric, photopolymeric binder with a very high uh, ratio actually and and therefore the binder burnout is difficult and we cannot make whole a uh, wall thicker than maybe maximum 10 millimeters or so so if you want to make bigger parts you need to make thicker parts and this is why we are going for the lcm technology one other advantage what LIS cannot do uh, but LCM can do is multi-material. So we can also do multi-material. We can do combined ceramic, ceramic, ceramics, metal, and also if necessary, ceramics with polymers. So this is what we can really um, do here. I think I don't want to go into detail since we are talking here about uh, the list technology. And this is our solution to make large and colored, especially dark ceramic materials. This is what we call the Litos way of big, because with our industrial standard technology, uh, we cannot address all um, customers issue. So once again, dark ceramics and thick walls, this is what is needed. And how uh, can we address this? Uh, so we have together with, with aluminum system uh, introduced the laser induced slip casting. The, technology we are using or the, the, the name we're using is this uh, Vario, uh, Ceramax Vario V900. Uh, As you can see here on the right uh, picture, this is a laser-based technology and it's a solution to print, as I said, large parts uh, and uh, dark ceramics. But and this is always for me very important to full density. This is um, something which we are focusing on to always deliver uh, the same material properties as in conventional forming. Um, and it's definitely very complementary to the LCM technology. So it is an additional solution for the ceramic market. And there's always my, my impression is always there is not one superior technology uh, for everything but you really have to choose the right technology for your, for your application. Um, I will go into the details again, but here just very briefly, we'll see throughout the webinar how it works. So it's a, a very um, simple principle, but although a very sophisticated one. Uh, so we have a water-based slurry, uh, which is very close to standard materials, so which are used for, for slip casting, for example. So this is this kind of material which can be used. And a laser over a scanning system, so drive driven over a scanning system, simply dries the slurry. So it's a 
casting, as we know from casting, water is dragged out by the gypsum mold. And here we are drying the, or taking the, the water out by simply using a laser. Currently, we have the building envelope, which we have for this current machine for the uh, V900. We have 250 times 250 times 290. Um, this is not really huge in that terms, but it can make very thick walls, as we will see later on. But the technology itself is scalable. You can make it much bigger. This is just a first machine, um, which has this envelope for the first time. So um, here you just see again the difference. One main difference is that we here we're using a CO2 laser, which dries the slurry. There we're using light to poly polymerize it. Uh, and one time we are building upside down, the other one bottom up. And um, as I said, we are focusing here with the list technology on thick walls, on large volumes to really build them up very fast. So we're focusing here on build-up speed. Uh, we can also make silicon use silicon carbide we can use uh, ultra high temperature ceramics and all all other dark ceramics can be used but it is not as precise as we are used from the lcm technology which is focusing on precision on accuracy on really parts which have not which does not have to be machined um, afterwards it can really usually i would say 99% of the parts in the LCM technology are used without, without post-processing, without machining. Um, and, and also from the repeatability and so on, we are, I would really, it's a, already a standard technology in ceramic forming, so uh, with very high reproducibility. Um, but you, you will see afterwards some, some, uh, um, some examples, but here, once again, uh, the, some, differences so we have with the list we have a water-based slurry which is close to slip casting which and this is i think also a good thing which we have now for the ceramicists where you can also develop your own slurries much easier than with the photocurable system because ceramicists are used to work with these kind of water-based systems so um, i think this is one of the advantages here of these systems and as i said wall thicknesses can be much much thicker and bigger uh, precision goes down a little bit, but you can also have a higher solid load because it's just water based uh, and rather low binder content at the end because you are already evaporating the water and you're left with three to uh, around 3% binder. Uh, so you can really debind very quickly. So if you want to say you can also, there is no need for debinding because it's so little um, debinding, uh, binding agent in there. And of course, as I said, the build-up speed is for us important, but not in terms of um, how, in, really in terms of volume, how much volume can it produce? And this is, you can use thicker layers here, building layers, and this increases a lot your building velocity. And as I said, um, you can also have uh, colored ceramics and process them as well. Here you see some achievements. We have uh, alumina, you can see, the, let's say, the, 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 the most common material, we're achieving normal densities, so 99, above 99% relative densities, comparable, uh, comparable material properties as in conventional forming technologies. Uh, and from the part size, you see, I mean, these are uh, bigger parts than we are used from LCM, and more important, to have much thicker walls uh, here to be used. Um, which these those things are not possible with the lithography-based technologies. And here we've also done some first uh, achievements with, with dark ceramics. We have used silicon nitrate, which can also be processed by LCM, um, I have to say. But most important is that we can use here silicon carbide, so really the, the SSSC, so the synthetic silicon carbide. And we have here already some first very good results, very promising. You can see here some parts in the uh, upper, uh, down uh, right corner. Um, the first shot of the density was uh, close to 99%. So um, this is something where we see a lot of uh, new potential for using silicon carbide. And of course, uh, 
also other non oxides as well as oxides and also ultra, ultra high temperature ceramics uh, it can be used here here you see also a, a microstructure that you see it's really dense it's really a normal microstructure and uh, i'm looking now uh, forward to the other presenta presenters to give here uh, a, a, a deeper insight into the list technology and uh, Dr. Wampers will now take over and uh, present his part of um, the presentation. So I'm looking forward to having afterwards the Q&A session. So uh, thank you and welcome uh, to our presentation from Alumina Systems. And uh, I try to get the control. So I'll see if it's working. Yeah, it's not working. So maybe uh, uh, Iveta will maybe take the control. Ah, now it's coming in. Yeah. Okay, so um, some words to the Alumina Systems Group. Um, we are situated here in Germany uh, and in the Czech Republic. And uh, we were founded by Siemens uh, in the <laughs> 50s. So uh, we have a lo very long tradition and uh, um, we have a production space here from uh, actual 6,000 square meters and uh, close to 100 employees. Um, uh, since 2018, the, the company is owned by the advisory board and the management. And in Czech Republic, um, now we have uh, now it's, uh, close to 4,000 square meters and 84 employees. And uh, so um, we uh, purchased uh, the Czech uh, site in 2011 as a low side uh, um, uh, production, um, um, a low cost production side, and the sales uh, volume uh, in in the group is around uh, 13 million. Uh, our core competencies is we are a ceramic producer. We have the ma ceramic manufacturing in house, so we are producing in the year more than 130 tons of uh, alumina oxide and uh, and making components and parts out of that. Uh, and our core competency is uh, to um, to vacuum uh, brace um, the uh, the parts together with uh, metals. So um, I would say 90% of our products are uh, combined uh, components made from uh, alumina and uh, uh, metal. So um, we are using here active brazing, passive brazing, uh, glass soldering, laser welding. And uh, since uh, around uh, eight years, we are now in uh, in the ceramic 3D printing business and started eight years ago with a, a printer from uh, from Litos uh, and uh, yeah, developed this uh, field uh, further on in the, in the next years. <clears throat> so next slide. Okay. Um, we are uh, we are uh, in the setup we have now. Uh, we have this uh, uh, Serafab laser from Litos, 8,500. Uh, and uh, Johannes, you know, it's uh, the, the, the number two in the world. And uh, so, uh, and uh, with that uh, printer, we are producing a lot of uh, small uh, and very precise parts. They are not, not have to be reworked like uh, already uh, um, said before. And um, the uh, newer printer we have is uh, a, a, a printer from 3D Serum with a construction field of 600 by 600 uh, by 300 millimeters, uh, where we can print uh, very big parts or a lot of uh, small parts on the printer. And uh, one of the um, uh, biggest or the newest uh, um, developments we made is the it's in our rings for the atomic layer deposition. Uh, with a diameter of 380 millimeters or the bigger one with 500 millimeters uh, of diameter, uh, but they are not printed in one part. Uh, they are printed in segments. So every ring uh, is made of eight segments. Um, what is then a glass brace together uh, to, a, to a ring. Uh, yeah, and the, the newest uh, printer we have in-house, this is always the same picture you have seen uh, in the presentation of Johannes, 
It's uh, the Kara Max Vario V900. And uh, as uh, he already said, uh, this is a, a system that works with a laser where the laser dries the, uh, or evaporates, uh, evaporates the, the water uh, out of the slurry. And um, uh, this, is, uh, this um, method is uh, very fast. Uh, so we can uh, speed up here from uh, 400 micron uh, to one, uh, one millimeter of layer thickness. Uh, what is uh, it's uh, 20 uh, times higher than a normal uh, uh, LCM method. And uh, this is the printer where we, uh, where we start now to make uh, 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 big uh, parts with a bigger uh, wall uh, uh, thickness and or even big components uh, if, if we have a bigger platform. Yeah, if you uh, if you compare the both uh, um, systems, you have uh, the normal system, uh, the LCM system for 3D printing. We have a binder content from uh, very 50 vol volume percent, and uh, for the LIS process, you have a binder binder content of only two to three volume percent. Um, and this leads to uh, a limitation in the in the wall thickness. Uh, what we see by six to eight millimeters. And uh, for the LIS process, we have uh, already achieved wall thicknesses bigger than 20 millimeters. And uh, um, one um, uh, disadvantage of the LCM process is uh, against the LIS that we have uh, a two-step process for debindering and sintering, uh, what uh, leads us to five to six days for debindering and two to three days for sintering. And um, in the uh, LIS process, uh, because the, the slurry is very similar to our, um, our slip casting uh, masses or our uh, pressing powder, um, we have only a one-step process uh, with a process time of uh, two to three uh, days. And uh, in addition, we can use standard temperature programs on the shop floor. This is very easy for the people. Uh, they work with that. We don't have to teach them uh, to take uh, different uh, programs for the for the kilns. Um, uh, and, the, and the next advantage is uh, that we um, uh, can use uh, standard uh, manufacturing machines for post machining, for green machining, uh, and after sintering, of course, for the grinding if necessary. So um, this is uh, um, this all leads to uh, a short time to market for the LIS process, and um, I want to show that in the next slide. Yo, um, here you see um, the if you compare uh, a, a normal a normal standard process like we work now um, with uh, and and uh, in in the uh, in the lower part and in the top you see. The process with the LIS uh, printing. If you add this to your standard process, um, if a customer comes and says, "Okay, I want to have four uh, bigger parts," and this is uh, uh, can happen, and is more more than normal, uh, then uh, we have to say, "Okay, we have uh, no uh, no pressing form for that. We have to order him. Uh, we have to offer him a tooling, uh, and and the tooling leads uh, to a delivery time of um, eight weeks uh, and costs." For the tooling uh, of around, um, let me say, four thousand euros, and um, then uh, the customer has to pay four thousand euros, and we are uh, we need two months just to make the preform. Um, if you go to the LIS uh, um, technology, you can start immediately uh, to print uh, the raw parts. Uh, and uh, as I said, you are ready in, in two to three days. Um, yeah, you have to sinter it. And um, uh, um, uh, or if you want to uh, green machine it, um, you are uh, even better than two to three weeks. If you are a place on the machine and you can start at once, you are faster than two, two to three weeks. You are in one week, you are ready. And then uh, the, uh, after that process, first, when you have the, the, the raw part, you can start with the machining, sintering um, with a standard process. And this uh, uh, brings you um, at least uh, four to six weeks of uh, advantage, and the customer has not to pay for any uh, tooling. Uh, and this uh, is all just referred to the construction um, size of the of the printer. The bigger the printer is, uh, the bigger parts you can make. <clears throat> Here I have um, I have added some uh, pictures from our production. 
Uh, and this is what I uh, what I just mentioned uh, with the isostatic uh, form. What you see here is the the the, the jacket housing of the isopressing form and the metal core. And uh, if you have to um, uh, if you have to uh, buy that, is around uh, four thousand uh, euros. Um, this uh, form will be uh, uh, put in an isostatic uh, pressing uh, with one thousand eight hundred bars. And what you get out, you see on the next slide. Yeah, you see uh, this uh, blank. Uh, this is the isostatic breast tube, uh, like like the ceramic people say on the left and the right side with that elephant food, and um, and then you have to put that uh, uh, in a in a green machining, uh, and then you get out this machined green raw parts, and this is that what you get from the uh, direct from the from the LIS printer. Uh, so this tube, uh, what you see here in in the uh, in the second picture on the left side, um, is is the, the 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 raw part. You have to machine it and then uh, put it on a on a transfer platform for the kiln and then uh, in the gas center uh, furnace. Yeah, um, what we what we have done already, um, we have uh, we have printed some cubes. Um, this is for uh, 3D uh, oriented people, uh, normally uh, uh, not, nothing magic uh, to, to print a cube, but uh, to print a cube with a 20 millimeter wall thickness, uh, this is uh, something new. So um, this is a very simple um, example, uh, what is possible with that uh, new technology. And uh, like uh, Johannes mentioned before, we uh, we end up at the 3.93 density. So this is not uh, that is a material where you where you can work with, where you can make constructions with. So here you see some examples um, where we see um, uh, the potential uh, for raw parts uh, we can uh, print with the with that machine. Coming to my uh, uh, summary, um, yeah, with, with the LIS uh, technology, um, we are able to make a big and, and very thick walled uh, components. And um, uh, we are able uh, to make the machining and the post machining with uh, standard machines on, on the green bodies. Um, by the way, then we are very fast uh, by, by printing and um, uh, we can use standard sintering programs uh, as, uh, and uh, all the machines you use in the standard manufacturing process. The materials we have in, in focus is, uh, is clear. We are, uh, we are working mainly with uh, aluminum oxide, uh, but we have some, uh, some things uh, or some R&D projects uh, for a quadrite or for silicon carbide. And um, yeah, so I'm, uh, I hand over to the next speaker. So, ah, yeah. so thanks, Mr. Wampers, and hello, everybody. Um, yeah, I will close uh, the lecture series with insights into the technology development of the LISP process. <clears throat> there's a, therefore, I will uh, introduce the, the, the printing process flow some words to the list technology today and tomorrow, a basic insight into the material development and the advantage of the list technology from our point of view. Uh, at this point, short words to who we are, what's our background and what we're we doing. Yeah, we are Crab 3 d founded by Manja Sebe and me in February this year. We are located in uh, the, the Green Park, Stahnsdorf, close, close to Berlin. Yeah, the, we, the technical part of uh, CREP 3D, uh, has more than 14 years experience in the field of slurry-based ceramic uh, printing with some yeah, inventions, patents, and, and publications. Manja has more than 16 years experience in all fields of uh, economy. And in our point of view, it was a perfect team to start up. We focusing on uh, water-based ceramic 3D printing processes and their 
for the uh, development. One of them is, of course, the, the list process. And what we do is to consult and support you or customers to the right process, printing process uh, for the applications. We manufacture components, we carry out material development, prepare customer materials for the uh, 3D printing processes and adapt the process to, to the materials. Uh, if a standard printer not fulfill uh, the customer requirements, we can customize the printer and process uh, uh, for their requirements and, and applications. And finally, we can support you to, to implement the 3D printing process in your production or company, including um, yeah, post treatments and all other <laughs> necessary things. So enough to us, uh, let's move on to the uh, process flow of the LIS method. Yeah, apart uh, from creating the 3D part, uh, 3D data and, and uploading the SEL file to the <laughs> to the machine, the preparation of the printing process in our house always begins with the preparation of the material. Um, for the material processing, the ceramic powder, binder, and some additives are processed into a water-based uh, suspension. The suspension is deposited layer-wise by a dispenser unit onto the build platform and subsequently smoothed by a doctor blade. In order to write the, the component information into the suspension, uh, a laser selectively tries out the suspension. And yes, and, and, and the, the, the layer deposition and, and writing the information into the suspension is an yeah, an alternate uh, cycle. After the build process, the part can be easily removed out of the untreated suspension. After trying and any necessary uh, uh, green processing of the components, it can be sintered like a conventional manufactured part. Yeah, to get a <clears throat> better visual image of the process, I will show you a short video. Let's start. Okay. Um, yeah, the suspension is deposited onto the build platform and the doctor blade uh, smooths the layer. And the laser evaporates the water selectively and writes the, the, the part information in each, la each layer. So the platform is moved out of the construction space space and and the the, comp uh, the component is simply rem removed or demolded out of the the suspension here's some quarters which was really fast printed okay what can this technology already do today next slide come on Mm. It's not now. Sorry about this, but it will not step to the next slide. Ah, okay. Sorry about it, but now I got it. <laughs> okay. The Biggest um, building platform today uh, yeah, has the size of 200 to 250 millimeters, and we can achieve a minimum wall thickness of around three millimeters. Okay, because of the laser wavelengths and the water based suspensions, um, the process works for oxide and non oxide ceramics, doesn't matter if black or white. Depend on the, the layer thickness and the process parameter, a build up rate of around 10 millimeters uh, per hour can be achieved at the moment. This technology tomorrow. Um, yes, one of the further steps is to scale up the build platform up to 500 to 500 millimeters, which opens 
yeah, higher part size or <laughs> four times more parts within one printing step. And yes, as Mr. Wambos has already mentioned and shown, it's possible to, to produce simple geometrics for, for green body uh, post-processing very yeah, quickly with this list process. That's a big benefit compared to conventional production to get two less um, yeah, quick a green body. But um, yeah, on the other hand, um, to print very close to the final contour will be will reduce the, the, the processing steps of green body shaping and also saves material. Therefore, our development is in the direction of improving the resolution with the layers, special additives, and so on. And finally, uh, uh, to improve the, the build up rates, we work at the, the laser and the, the scanning parameters. Now a few words about the uh, material development. Material development is always the interaction between suspensions and the process parameters. On the one hand, there is always a connection between particle size and, and the possible uh, uh, layer thickness. The layer thickness always depends on the viscosity and the surface tension of the suspension. The resolution of the process also depends on the layer thickness, <laughs> but also on the particle size, particle size distribution, particle shape, and filling degree, and so on. Yes, that sounds a bit complicated, yeah, and it is, but the production of conventional slip casts, uh, of conventional uh, casting slips, um, also requires years of experiments. But now the good news in principle, all ceramic materials can be processed to a suspension with the right properties, and the process can be adapted to this uh, uh, suspension. So we, uh, we are working on, on standard suspension filled with alumina oxides, silicon nitride, silicon carbide, and so on. And this means for you that uh, materials will be available, and you can do fundamental tests or prototyping on the, the list process. So, and in summary, the advantage of the, the list process and water-based ceramic suspensions, all ceramic materials can be processed regardless of their chemical compositions and, and particle size. Water-based suspensions are almost binder-free or organic-free. Uh, therefore, an additional debindering step is not necessary. And there is no, yeah, no upper wall thickness limit. Yeah? And with increasing the, the resolution of the process, um, very complex structures will be possible in the future. So, and compared to, to other <laughs> suspension-based 3D printing processes, the material is yeah, quite cheap. Finally, I uh, go to uh, go into yeah, a few components made of, of different materials. Um, yeah, video is always a beautiful thing when it's work. And here is uh, the molding step of a rotating gear made of uh, aluminum oxide. And it will come back to you in the next slide. Yes, it works. So uh, in principle, all shapes can be mapped. On the left, uh, uh, the molded hollow block. In the middle, the hollow block already dried and, and ready for sintering. And on the, the right, this rotated gear. The components are already very close to contour and just require little or no uh, uh, green processing. The silicon nitride part shown here is one of the first tries of silicon nitride suspension on the list process. Um, the process parameters and the suspension were not optimized. Nevertheless, this geometry uh, could be manufactured quite precisely and sintered with, uh, without cracks. Um, yeah, with the this technology, basic tests have already been carried out with aluminum oxides, silicon oxides, silicon carbide, silicon nitrides, and, and various porcelains. So we are ready for the list process. Are you too? 
then walk your ways. Thanks for your attention and back to Madeline, I guess. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, well, I see we have quite a lot of questions already, so we can get into it. Uh, we will answer as many as we can. Um, afterwards, you can always as well get in touch with Lithos to have or anyone to have your questions answered as well. But let's get to it. So the first question is, why are you not using a huge SLA machine to produce either big ceramic parts or multiple small parts? Mm -hmm. Are the big machines more productive? So mm -hmm. a complicated one to start. Yeah, I think this, um, maybe this, this addresses to me. So um, I think um, two important things which we already mentioned. Uh, the one thing is we are, or I'm thinking that you always have to have the right technology for the right application. And the, this lithography-based technologies are uh, more focusing on smaller parts uh, or are better for smaller parts and thinner walls. So big machines usually tend to make big parts. Uh, and as we have seen in presentation of Alumina system from Holger Wampus, is that um, he has a perfect path for, for example, for bigger machines, but basically um, they can also not do everything. And I think one really misconception is is currently that bigger machines are working faster uh, or more productive which is actually um, not true so we have a very good understanding of of the technologies i would say i think that the best understanding in, in the market because we are using a lot of technologies in-house which we are just using for our labs and, and not uh, selling it publicly and so we can evaluate all those things very good, and and we think that if we really um, talk about uh, lithography based or in really making uh, parts without machining after without um, after work, uh, I think the the LCM technology as we have it is really and we see this is the industrial standard and can be used also for uh, huge uh, batches or for huge sizes in terms of, of numbers, sorry, numbers of parts. Uh, and um, the LIS technology is really something which filled a gap for the ceramic industry um, in terms how to uh, apply it to other applications, other materials. Great, thank you so much. That was a very complete answer. Um, well, as I mentioned, I'll go with what's been upvoted, but just to keep with a similar theme, um, what exactly happens when the laser hits the suspension? Could you please explain it in detail? Oh, yeah, this is, uh, I will explain this. This is my part. Um, Iveta, could you please go to the um, backup slides? I prepared something for this. Oh, okay, thank you. So usually you have to think about that the LIS process <clears throat> is more related or you can compare it, for example, with a casting in a plaster mold. So what you, what you need is, for example, here is a powder, the water and the additive. You mix it together to a slurry and the shape and you bring it into shape with the, into the plaster mold. Yes, I can do. <clears throat> so and uh, you, 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 you put the slurry in the plaster mold and wait certain time if the wall thickness is uh, high enough. After that, you have the drying process and you get to the components. So the list process is um, a little bit similar. So we have the powder, the water and the additive you get into the slurry. So that is more or less the same slurry composition you can start with. But now you do the shaping of the component by the laser. So you dry, you <clears throat> here you dry with a plaster mold and in the LIS process, you do it with a laser process. And afterwards of drying as well, you have the sintering and the component. The next slide is um, what we start with. So you have the component, the, the component build up. So you have a container, which is where you have the slurry in the building platform. And on the building platform, you, uh, you have the laser as uh, Thomas Müller showed already in his short, in his short uh, film. But what happens now directly under the laser? So at the beginning, you have here, <clears throat> uh, we have the reaction here in, the, in a volume element. 
And you have here uh, the filler elements, yeah, the, the filler particles, the water, the additive, and some binder materials. And uh, under the laser is the reaction zone. And now we start um, what happens now when the laser evaporates the water. Second, now it's going on. Okay. So <clears throat> when the laser ever evaporates the water, you get out of this element, of this volume element, the water out. So the, the particles move next to each other. And according to the binder and different additive, they, they start to stick together. And they <clears throat> so they, they contact next to each other. And if you do this uh, for several times, time, so a longer dwelling time of the laser or a number of crossings lead to a greater penetration of the depth of the layer. So you see the, the, the increasing of the layer height is now in here increasing. And now we move on and to evaporate some more water. And here you can see you have here a very, very high layer build up. And when you see here, when you see here the penetration depth, we can here achieve a depth of height um, up to 500, sometimes also one millimeter can be achieved. And with the penetration depth in the polymer base layers, we can only achieve here something around 25 up to 50 microns. Okay. Great. Okay, well, thank you. That was very informative, um, extremely interesting. And moving on to the next question for whoever would like it. Uh, Takumi asks, have you ever printed silicon oxide based ceramics like core in, LI in the LIS process? Is it the question to me? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, uh, silicon oxide, yes, uh, uh, we printed. Uh, not with this machine, but with the basic uh, equipment uh, at the TU Klausa <laughs> a few years ago. We have uh, yeah, developed a simple surreal composition. And yes, it's, it's possible to print with a quite good resolution. Good. Um, well, the next question as well um, is, can the leftover material from a print be reused? If yes, does it need filtering and cleaning? And what percentage of this leftover material can be reused? At, at least a fast answer, yes, it can be reused and um, does not need any filtering. It's uh, slurry can be just reused. Great, well, that makes it easy. While well, continuing on the theme of materials, uh, another anonymous attendee would like to know, are there any medical grade materials for LIS technology? In principle, in principle, you can use, I think that that's the, the good part of this technology, you can use any material here uh, and they could be also medical grade. I mean, ceramics are usually bio inert or, or even bioresolvable, whatever you need. Uh, but so far, we have not yet worked on medical grade uh, materials for a I, th I think this question relates more to hydroxyl appetite. Okay, yeah. But related materials. So, but this is, <clears throat> of course, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so possible, though we haven't uh, done it. Um, actually, a question just became popular. Uh, another autonomous uh, anonymous attendee would like to know. How does the LIS tech? What is the benefit of using the LIS technology over binder jetting for ceramics? Thomas, would you like to? Um, in principle, binder jetting, um, you, yeah, with the list technology, you can use all particle size. Yes, for the for the standard binder jetting, it's just uh, possible to use uh, particle size down to um, yeah 20, 25 microns. And also the, 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 the density of the powder bed is not uh, comparable to the, to the LIS um, technology or the, to the, the LIS screen bodies. So with the binder jetting, it's more or less not possible to, to center dense, a dense uh, uh, ceramic. With the LIS technology, it is possible. 
Mm -hmm. This yeah. was for us one of the key aspects why we were using this technology because if usually if you do high performance ceramics, you want to have a dense part. And this is besides reaction bonded silicon carbide, not possible with uh, binder powder jetting. Exactly. So. Sorry, I was muted. At least the Zoom <laughs> told me. Uh, whoops. Well, if it, is it a webinar? There are a couple of people times that we have that. So next question is: Can parts in the else? They said LCS, but I think they mean LIS process be stacked on top of each other like nesting in an LPBF process? Mm -hmm. You mean a three D? <laughs> Basically, you cannot. Uh, you, you need support structures to nest it in, in the LPF uh, process. Uh, and, and I think it's since it's not self-supporting, uh, mm -hmm. it's not possible. Okay. Yeah, well, makes sense. Um, another question which has gained suddenly in popularity is what are the max and minimum viscosities of the slurries that could be used in the LIS process? Um, maybe a question maybe, to maybe ask. I can, maybe okay. I can. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know any any viscosities uh, by by value right now. But um, uh, once again, uh, we are we are using here uh, standard slurry. So this is uh, mm -hmm. it's the same slurry we we are using for the for a slip casting uh, process. And uh, so I cannot uh, say by heart now what uh, what is the viscosity uh, exactly, but it's nothing nothing special. So you just uh, mix mix your slurry together, and as you use it for a slip casting, you fill it in the printer, and you can print with that more or less. Yeah, just, we we simply don't know yet the limitations, <laughs> but I, I I'm totally agree. You you can use anything. It's not of uh, very importance. Well, we'll stay tuned in any case. Um, a lot of questions on limitations, so we shall see. Uh, another question is, what is the thinnest wall thickness you can print with? And have you seen any warping when, you, when thin part printing? I think Thomas, is, you uh, yes. mentioned this already in your um, yes, presentation. Uh, Yes, uh, the, the, the absolute minimum wall thickness and is maybe a, a three millimeters at the moment, uh, and it's also because of the the, the, the layer thickness. Yes, uh, with a layer thickness of of five hundred microns or one millimeter, it's not possible to to achieve uh, really thin wall thicknesses. So that's the reason for why we go or try to go down with the layer thickness and to to achieve a smaller wall thickness. But it's also a point of the, the, the slurry or the, or the particle size the distribution and the particle form and so on, because it has to be stable enough to, to build up three millimeter wall thicknesses. So, and yes, maybe, maybe in the future it goes less, but it was not the, the point to, to go with this process to, to uh, really thin uh, wall thickness. We want to achieve uh, thick <laughs> wall thicknesses, and uh, everything else can be here yeah, post-processed <laughs> by green machine. And actually, since we just talked about post-processing, well, not exactly, um, can green parts with a low percentage of binder, I think that should be, be stored for some time and sinted after a number of days and weeks? If yes, what would be the storage conditions? Mm -hmm. Yes, it could. So um, <clears throat> usually after after you have uh, print these parts, you have to dry them in a furnace, uh, 40, 40 degrees, something like that, quite slowly. And after that time, you can store them for weeks or at least a month or two. And they uh, you should take care that um, the, um, the the part should not soak once again water into the into the into the body. It should be dried stored at least. 
that would make sense as it would be similar. Um, and actually, gentlemen, are you able to stay a few minutes over to answer one or two more questions? Great. Well, uh, hopefully you can stay with us. If not, well, we'll put up the recording later. Also feel free, actually, if there's a email address that people can reach you for questions, if you could just put it in the chat, do feel free to reach out uh, if you have specific questions. Um, well, since we were just talking about slurry, um, an anonymous attendee is asking, how do you wash out the residual slurry after demolding? Thomas, maybe. Are you muted? I am, yes, I have a problem with this, this muting. And I, 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 got, I did get the, the, the question. Could you, could you? No, uh, I, can, I can answer, I can answer. This. Okay, sorry, you, thanks. You, you just take out the part of the, as, as it's seen in the video, and then you maybe rinse it with water and that's it. So Easy. it's very simple, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if it's the answer, yes, it's, <laughs> yeah. it is. <laughs> Well, good, a fast answer so we can get more questions in. Um, what density, if you know, have you achieved with SIC? Uh, with SIC, it, we were close to 99%. So, but it was really the first, the first uh, sintering procedure. So without any, um, any uh, you know, optimization, um, I guess we will achieve the normal, so to say, normal material properties as we've achieved with aluminum and with other materials. Good. Um, and actually, so a question addressed for Dr. Holger, actually, uh, not exactly LIS, but what is the accuracy you are getting with LCM? If you could just unmute yourself. Please. Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> the Pardon, I, I didn't get the question. Ah, yes. Uh, so what is the accuracy you are getting with LCM? The accuracy? Mm -hmm. Accuracy. Yeah. Accuracy, okay. Um, uh, we can, uh, in the moment, uh, we get about 60 microns. 60 okay. to 70 microns um, of, of tolerance. Um, and this is only referred to the, to the light source. But uh, this is, uh, this is uh, the printer. And Johannes, maybe you can, you can comment that. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, the, the printer is now seven or eight years old. Uh, I think that the newer printers, uh, they are even going down to 60 or, or less uh, microns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you, you, are, you are now referring to the resolution of the printer. So the printer you currently have has a resolution of 60 microns. But in terms of accuracy, I would say um, even with these printers, you could achieve uh, less than that. Um, our standard accuracy is in the range of, of 10 to 20 microns uh, of repeatability. Uh, but we have also customers which are focusing very much on, on specific parts, uh, which even go, go below uh, 10 microns in accuracy. Excellent. Uh, another question is asking, what is the binder that is used? <laughs> <laughs> no, we cannot answer. <laughs> 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 similar to sleep casting slurries. Yes, <laughs> something like this. <laughs> um, and then just a couple more. Uh, what would you say is the max thickness for something uh, for alumina and dark ceramics? In, in terms of, of wall thickness? Uh... Yes, I imagine. They don't specify, but yeah. I understood. In Holger, what did you already achieve in terms no, we of have, uh, we have. Now we are we are um, for alumina we are more than uh, twenty millimeters, and um, for silicon carbide uh, we have no uh, expertise right now. This is only the first trials you did in your house, so um, I don't know what what you. I think did. I think yeah, as I said twenty millimeters is is the current the current status, but I don't think that this is the limit. Yeah, we just have not explored this to to a big extent. Yeah, the parts come comparable to conventional uh, manufactured parts. So take this wall thickness and around this is the, the, the limit. Yeah, you can, uh, uh, if you, um, what we have not uh, um, have in uh, consideration right now is the sintering process as well. Uh, yeah. as, you know, as you know, um, we have standard processes for, for, for wall thicknesses till 20 millimeters maybe. And if we have uh, even thicker parts, maybe to 40 or five, 50 millimeters, we have already produced. 
we have uh, Cinturane programs, they are double as long as that standard processes. So um, the, the wall thickness is not only limited by the printer, uh, it's also limited by the by the uh, by the screwing program. So this is uh, you have to see in combination. Yeah, but, but the, the limitation doesn't come from the 3D printer. It's more from let's say pure material science at the end. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then this might be a good last question: Would, Are you able to give estimates for cost per part? <laughs> It's it, actually, depends, it depends on the volume and the yeah. shape and the design. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> depends on a lot, in which case I will end with one last question because I think we should wrap up. What would be considered a standard temperature program on the shop floor and what is the debinding sintering temperature in that one step process? Yeah, uh, the debindering, uh, the debindering uh, temperature is, is about uh, uh, 1000 uh, degrees C and um, the uh, top temperature for sintering is around 16, uh, 1650 uh, degrees C and um, of course we have our, uh, our own sintering curves, how we do that uh, and in what time and, and which what uh, stiffness we go up to the temperatures. But the two levels are around 1,000 till 1,600 to 1,000 and um, for debindering and 1,650 uh, for, for sintering. Great. Well, with that, I think we've gone quite a bit over. So I'm going to say goodbye to everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Do feel free to get in touch uh, if you have specific questions. If there's a contact info, if you could just please put it in the chat. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen, for being with us today. It was very interesting. Um, well, it was fantastic. Uh, thank you so much. And well, thank you everyone for coming as well. And have a great rest of your day, afternoon, depending on where you're located. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks.